Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. We also have an amazing community group. Just look for a daily Bible podcast over on Facebook under the groups. We would love to have you there. And it's been fun seeing photos of people having their prayer requests. So just mm-hmm. feel like our casa is your casa. Like come on in to make yourself home. Show us your grandkids and let us know what you're reading and what you're getting out of it. And also, uh, when you go to your favorite platform and you download Daily Bible Podcast, don't forget to share it with a friend Mm -hmm. and also go in and rate us. If if you feel like God has blessed you through Daily Bible Podcast, hey, give us four stars, give us five stars and drop a comment that helps spread the word and share the podcast. Um, with others. Okay, so today we read Jeremiah 42, Jeremiah 43, 44, and also Ezekiel 33, verses 21 through 33. <sighs> like Israel. Like, all I've got to say is, oh, Israel. Okay, I need to get you a t shirt that says, oh, oh Israel. Israel. <laughs> like my favorite thing you say oh israel like here we are again israel i just felt like i i just was like as i was reading i was like oh israel like how far have you fallen and and so today we have a little remnant of the israelites that are still in jerusalem and and as we've been talking this little remnant is supposed to be like really cool people like uh we'd want to hang out with them because they love god and and um you know they they want to grow in their faithfulness with God. They want to get to know him better. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about this small little remnant. Yeah, they're the yeah. good ones that like are so yeah. good that God's going to save them and keep them. Yeah, yeah. Well, this small little remnant in Jerusalem, they are scared <laughs> and they want to make a run for it. Because anything has to be better than what they are walking through right now. And any leader has to be better than who they have over top of them right now. So they asked Jeremiah if he's going to ask the Lord for them to show them where to go and what to do. And they tell Jeremiah that they're going to obey God. I mean, they're going to do whatever he tells them. So that's why they've asked him to go to God for them is because they're going to do whatever he tells them. So they have to wait 10 days um, for Jeremiah to hear from God. And as I, I, my notes in my Bible were like, 10 days is a long time. It is a like, long 10 time. days is a really long time to wait. And so Jeremiah at the end of this 10 days says that this is what God asks of you to stay here in this land. And God says, I will build you up. I will plant you. Do not fear. I am with you. And of course, there is the warnings that go along with the, if you don't obey me, here's what's going to happen. Well, after he finishes off with the dire warnings of, if you disobey me, he says, listen, you remnant of Judah, the Lord has told you, do not go to Egypt. Don't forget this warning. Okay. So this reminds me of my children when I'm like, they're like, please, please, if you let us stay up after one more movie, we will promise to go to bed without (laughs) saying anything. And they're like, please, please just tell us what God says and we will obey him. And the whole time you are knowing like they're not going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they do it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, Israel. I mean, come on. Oh, Israel, your city lays in shambles. You have heard from multiple prophets how bad you have acted, how awful your sins are, and still you make the request of Jeremiah and don't plan to follow through. Exactly it. You lie, you lie, you lie. So instead, of course, they claim that Jeremiah is the liar here and they decide to head off for Egypt and they take Jeremiah and his scribe with them. I do not know how that went down. I don't know. I would like to know how that went down, but I don't know how that Did went they, down. Did they like tie him up? Did they like put him in a barrel? Did they tie him to a camel? Like, I don't know. Like, why wouldn't you tell us, Jeremiah? I know. Like, how you got there? Like, we know it wasn't like a car like how did you have to walk yourself i don't know 
I, I don't know. So then we see the word of the Lord come to Jeremiah again, and God commanded Jeremiah to do the same kind of thing that he's commanded him to do in Judah, to do something that would illustrate and memorialize a prophetic word. He commanded Jeremiah to take some large stones and hide or bury them at the entrance to Pharaoh's house in Egypt. And so this was precisely on that spot in front of the royal residence that Nebuchadnezzar would assert his sovereignty over Egypt and would be doing so again at God's command. The large stones were symbolic of a pedestal on which Nebuchadnezzar would set up his throne as a sign of his conquest of Egypt, again, doing so at God's command. So the ESV, following some other translations, renders the line in Jeremiah 43, 12, he shall clean the land of Egypt as a shepherd cleans his cloak of vermin. And one scholar said, there is a homely picture here, which is well <laughs> understood by those who traveled in some of the parts of the Middle East. The picking of the lice from one's clothing is used to describe it. Nebuchadnezzar's plundering activities when he finally invaded Egypt. It reminds me of those monkeys at the zoo that pick lice off of each other. Like, have you seen that? <laughs> like the, the picking, like the, okay, that, first of all, that picture is in my mind. But second of all, the Pharaoh just let Jeremiah bury stones at his entrance <laughs> Like I know I I was trying to find research to that like I so if someone does know like the behind the scenes <laughs> story of that please let us know drop it in the chat because I was trying to find I was like I my mind just can't totally wrap around this this is one of those that I've just got to let go but I, yes I was like how how is he doing that how yeah. did he do that like were the guards like watching and laughing him or was he like sneaking at night and burying stones but then no because they need to see him burying the stones because it's a symbol i just i almost picture like these you know how you picture like the egyptians in the white toga robes and then the spears like standing there just like looking at him like okay dude i don't know what you're doing but you're not trying to get in and hurt the pharaoh, so I guess we're going to let you bury these stones at the doorway. Oh, oh, I mean, if they're in there, they're, all their garb, maybe he's underneath some of that garb and he's sneaking around on his <laughs> belly. And he's... We're like totally... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just like... This is so... Some of the things you're like, yeah, 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 you said this 20 times. Like, we get it. Other times you're like... Could you not elaborate more on this, mm -hmm. on what is happening here? That is okay. So anyway, so going on to Jeremiah 44, Jeremiah delivers a strong message from God to the Judean refugees in Egypt. And it says that God is angry for them for their continued idolatry and disobedience. Remember, this is the remnant again. This is the, this is the mm -hmm. remnant, um, especially their worship of the queen of heaven, which is a pagan deity. And mm. the people are so bold. And so. Uh, which, okay. So do you know, like my kids, when I see them and one of them is like saying something rude to me and the other ones are like, Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. This is what I'm doing when I'm reading right now. <laughs> like when I was <laughs> reading this in Jeremiah 44, 17, when I see what the people are saying, which I'm going to read it in a second, I'm like, Oh, uh -uh, I do not believe you're doing that. I just, yeah. It's like, okay. So this is what they were saying. We will do whatever we want. We will burn incense and pour out our liquid offerings to the queen of heaven just as much as we like, just as we and our ancestors and our kings and officials have always done in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For in those days, we had plenty to eat and we were all well off and had no troubles. I'm like, my hands are over my mouth. I'm like, I cannot believe you're saying this right now. Like you've just seen Jerusalem like destroyed zedekiah's eyes were just poked out like the princes and the military were killed like you're now you're escaping to egypt and you're gonna say we will do whatever we want when jeremiah is trying to give you a warning like i that blow me blew me away so god recounts again how he sent the prophets to warn the people of judah about the consequences but they do not listen and then Jer Jerusalem, other cities of Judea are destroyed. And so 
The people's response is that defiance. They claim mm-hmm. they had prosperity when they yeah. worshipped the king, the queen of heaven. But since they stopped, now they have suffered. <laughs> it's like, wh- what? What is going on? So Jeremiah warns them that the continued disobedience will lead to their destruction. So this is the remnant now, as God has determined to punish them. And then the chapter strongly condemns idolatry for disobedience, which yes, I mean, yes, they're continuing to disobey. And then we get to Ezekiel. So you're like, okay, so we'll get away from Jeremiah and those people because I just have had enough of those people. Mm -hmm. And then we're with Ezekiel. So this passage, Ezekiel has been appointed as a watchman for the people. And again, the fall of Jerusalem is announced and he he receives a word from the Lord and God communicates that the people of Israel have not been heeding the warnings and, and words of the prophets, which were like, yes, we agree with what you are saying. They listen to words like beautiful songs, but don't take them to heart or act on them. And God points out the hypocrisy of the people who speak well of the prophets, but do not follow their guidance. I'm like, well, I don't see them speaking well of the prophets. So this must be off screen, them speaking well of the prophets. Right. Uh, yeah. But the people's righteousness or wickedness will be judged individually. So God is fair and everyone will be accountable for their own actions. So Ezekiel's role as a watchman is to deliver the warnings, but it's up to the individual to respond. And the passage is a clear reminder of the personal responsibility of one's relationship with God and a call for genuine obedience. So they can't even say like, well, everyone else is doing it because now God's like each individual person will be responsible. Oh, Israel. (laughs) I was like, what in the world? <laughs> oh, Israel. Yeah. Oh, Israel. Let's just sit and ponder, oh, <laughs> Israel, for a while, uh, for a minute or so, because we need to take a break and we need to hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day is canopy. It's an ornamental roof-like projection or covering. And a canopy canopy is a covering that serves as a shelter. And we heard about canopy today in Jeremiah 43, 11. The God of Israel says, I will certainly bring my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, here to Egypt. I will set his throne over these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal canopy over them. So this Mm -hmm. is back to that story where Jeremiah is hiding the stones, and we're like trying to figure out how is he hiding the stones on this one. But this is, he hid, he ha, is hiding the stones. God's plan is to bring Nebuchadnezzar in because they're in Egypt. And so Nebuchadnezzar is going to take over Egypt and God puts his canopy there. So there are a lot of explanations from scholars on this verse and what God is doing. I am still not clear as we talked about it earlier. It's not clear that he chooses what he will cover, but it's also how he chooses to cover what he's covering here or what the stones symbolize. We know that there's a symbolization here, but as I walked away, I was like, God chooses to cover or Mm -hmm. enclose or hide away. He chooses to do that. God is our cover and he's showing that to us today that what we read today was very symbolic. But what we are coming to see clearer and clearer with each day is how he shelters us, how Mm -hmm. he shelters his children, how he has a canopy over us. And we're also seeing that there are things that he has hidden and hides under a covering like Nebuchadnezzar probably will never know. He never did know what was hidden, hidden under his throne or the sign that it would represent to God's people. But God did. So God uses a canopy to hide, but also God uses a canopy to cover and to enclose or to hide away. And I have felt that in my life. I know Mm -hmm. Trisha's felt that in her Mm -hmm. life. And I know there's so many of you who have felt covered. Like you, you, like what is the verse in, um, in Psalm that talk about the, the eagle or the uh, the bird covering. I just of- looked it up because I was going to bring it up. It says Psalm 90. We're so in sync, Michelle. <laughs> Psalm 90, 
one four it says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart rampart yeah yeah that's a good covering it's a covering and and just as i was reading it i know that's that is not exactly the meaning of what we were supposed to get out of today but i was also seeing that in spite of the wickedness that we saw today I mean, okay, okay, Jeremiah wasn't the wicked one or Ezekiel wasn't the wicked one, but we saw so much wickedness from God's people. God is still covering them. Mm -hmm. He's still covering them. He's still making sure that there is a way for them. He's still making sure that the enemies are going to follow his decrees. And he is still making sure that while his people are punished, that there is a small remnant. It might be even smaller once we get done talking or seeing what Israel is doing. I was ready to smite some of those people (laughs) the way they were talking. (laughs) He's still making sure that they will come through and that they are covered and that they will come through. They They might be in pain when they get through that. They might have a little bit of trauma from all that they are walking through, but he's going to make sure that they are covered and they will walk through that. Yeah. And so the amazing thing uh, in that, when you read in Jeremiah 43, 11, it says the God of Israel says, I will bring my servant Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, the people are not doing what God says. And Nebuchadnezzar is doing what God is telling him to do. I mean, he's destroying stuff, but he's a pain at least. And he did go and seek out Jeremiah and he was going to make sure Jeremiah was going to take care of. It's just like, God was definitely covering Jeremiah. He was being mm-hmm. so faithful. I mean, now he's in Egypt and he's burying stones and probably being made fun of. I you just, I can't imagine him because he had to show them. It was a symbol. So people had to see him. So I'm, again, I'm sure they're making fun of him and the tone of their voice. I mean, I said it in a kind of sassy tone, but I don't know how else you would read that. We will do whatever we <laughs> want. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And yet God is still covering them. He hasn't completely wiped them off the map. There is going to be a remnant. They are in Egypt and he's saying, you know, don't go down there. But then even when he was saying, don't go down there, he's like, no one's going to come back. He goes, but when some of you return, like he's still like, he's still going to cover over them. He's not going to completely wipe them out. And when I was thinking of like, how does God cover us? He gives us rest. He provides mm-hmm. direction. He gives us grace. He helps us resist temptation. He helps us when we're hurting. He saves us. He gives us peace. He's continuing to give the people a message and showing them through Jeremiah by burying these stones and giving them a prophecy. Like he could have totally wiped his hands. He's still covering them. Like even if it's not always good news, he's still like letting them know what's happening and giving them a chance to turn back to them. Like that's a covering. And I just have to say, like, when I read what you picked for what of the day, I was like, uh, oh, okay, canopy. We could talk about something good <laughs> instead of desolation, destruction, uh, all the words. That, I wouldn't say bad words. They're, they are bad words. They're not curse words. All the hard, but words. All all the the hard, hard words. words. There we go. All the hard words. Canopy is like, it. it is, we can see that even Nebuchadnezzar, God mm-hmm. was covering his people by having Nebuchadnezzar care, cover them. And that's just a crazy thought, but it is like he was still taking care of them mm-hmm. and giving them messages. God is in the business of always caring for his people. Mm-hmm. Like he just is. We've seen that from the very beginning. Adam and Eve sinned. He, he kicked them out of the garden, but he provided for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just continues Cain. Cain, Cain killed his brother, but God provided for him. God provides for his people. Like yeah. though the people of God are provided and they are cared for. And we are. I mean, it just as I was reading about the canopy, I was thinking his banner over me is love. Mm-hmm. And God does. He has this banner over us. He has this canopy over us. He has a shield around us. And, um, and it's a beautiful thing. Trisha, will you pray for us today as we go about our day and just that we would feel his canopy around us? I will. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a canopy over us. You you protect us as even when things are hard. We know you're protecting us from so much. Even like the canopy protects from the sun or the wind or all the harshness. You are a covering over us just like you were a covering over your people, Lord. I thank you that you still care. You still love. You still provide. You still guide. You still give messages to us, even when like the people were like, I want to do things my Mm -hmm. own way, Lord. I thank you that you are a canopy over us. And I pray that you will just help us to turn to you. Uh, In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Ezekiel 34, 35, and 36. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com, find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.